hard teaching. This is in John chapter 6. And his hard teaching was this. I can feed you bread every single day. You've seen God do that in Egypt where bread fell from the sky and God said, Now you can Jesus said to these people, Now the Spirit. I'm the bread of life. And you cannot have anything to do with the Father except you go through me. So Jesus was changing it all up now. Now it wasn't about the law, it was about him. And him only. And he was putting some bad teaching on these people. What he was saying to them was that you have followed the rules, you have jumped through the rules, and you have tried your best to make things good in your life. But I'm going to tell you today that if you put me first, Verse 66 of John 6, it says, um, let's see here, memorize it. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Why would people turn their backs on Jesus after he met their needs? Because he told them a, a challenge. Said He told them that the world's going to hate them, uh, it's, life is going to be hard. You will have many trials and tribulations. And you have got to put me first. No one can come through the Father, uh, can come to me unless God has allowed it. And this was challenging them people. It's like, you're not going to just feed me? You mean i got to do something? And that's what was happening. So today I wanted to let you know, the Scripture says in verse 67, you do not want to leave too, do you? If you've ever been confronted with the truth about who you are, your purpose, is God real? Do you believe God is real? Do you believe that sin is real? Have you seen sin in the world? Have you seen sin in your life? Is sin real? Alright, if you believe that God is real and that sin is real, is the Bible real? Is the Bible truth? The Bible is written down by some guys that God dictated it to and they wrote it down a few thousand years ago. Anywhere from from 5,500 years ago to 2,000 years ago. These people wrote down these words that God said, write this down. They wrote it down and we found it and we translated it to our own language and we can read it today. The Word of God. And when you read it, it's the truth. You think you know it, right? You just, you just know. So when you're reading the Word of God, sometimes you come up on a part that's kind of hard. It's a little challenging, you know. And it, it, it means you've got to change where your current state is in order to get in the state of God. You got to change. You got to be born again. You got to redo. You got to die to self. All right? So Jesus has given them all the truth. I can feed your needs. I can take care of you. I can give you eternal life. What will you do? What will you do? And that's the question that the world's having to deal with today. What do you do today? So today, I want to tell you that if you have a need from Jesus, this is three needs we're going to go over today. The first need is for salvation. And Jesus has made that available to whosoever would come to Him, right? In John 3.16. All you have to do is believe. But there's going to be some times when you don't believe, right? There's going to be some times when the devil gets in your head and makes you not believe the goodness of God, the promises of God, the blessings of God. So what do you do? What do you do? Normally you get shrouded in darkness, right? Mm -hmm. Those moments when you're not seeking the face of God and the glory of God, the light of God, you're choosing to go in the darkness. You're slipping into it. You're going into it. And Jesus did not call you to live in darkness. He called you to be children of light. In 1 John 1 7, you got these ones on the board? In 1 John 
1, 7, the Bible says, If we walk in the light, and He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us, cleanses us from all sin. So if we will go to Him for forgiveness, for cleanliness, for starting over, for, for righting the wrong, if you go to Him and trust in Him to forgive you, He will. What He said, what He promised, right? Well, if He will forgive you, what do you do? Back to John chapter 6. Jesus said, you don't want to leave too, do you? So Peter, oh Simon Peter, you know the, the biggie guy, the ear off, and you know, that guy, Peter, who walked on water with Jesus, Peter says, Lord, to who should we go to? I want you to ask yourself this in your heart today. It says, you have the words of eternal life, God. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. So, Peter says, Where should we go to? Basically, what Peter is saying here, you have shown us the truth. I can't find this truth nowhere else. You tell me right now, somebody in this room tell me where you can go find truth other than God. In a science book, a history book, you know, it's the eternal truth, or as, as he says here, the truth that gives eternal life is only found in Jesus. He's the only one that can actually forgive us of our sins. He's the only one that can wash us clean. He's the only way. Okay? And he said that if you would come to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you come to him for salvation, for forgiveness, for starting over, he will let you do that called repentance. When you have sin in your heart, you know it don't belong, right? Alright, well, let me put it to you this way. And y'all, 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 talk more, it'll go quicker, I promise. <laughs> when you got sin in your heart, you feel conviction, you know it don't belong, it's wrong, and you cannot be happy like that. In this world that we're living in, there are people that are turning their backs on Jesus to go try to find happiness in places where it will not ever exist. People are seeking it in, in drugs and, and vapes and alcohol or relationships or habits or gambling and all of these different things to get that little momentary rush or high or satisfaction. It's not what you need though. What you need is the truth. The truth is that sin is a problem that separates people from God Almighty and sin is the reason why Jesus had to leave heaven, come down here, and be murdered on a cross so that I could be forgiven of that. That's why He came. Why would we turn our backs on that? Jesus, why did You come down here? Why? So I could live forever. So He could forgive me, right? My Jesus told me when I started following Him, He told me the truth. I would read the Bible and He would speak to my heart and He would tell me stuff like, um, this, this surrendering to me is, is going to make life harder. Following me is not popular. Going down the straight and narrow path is very hard to stay on. Okay? And, and he was showing me all these things that were truth, but they'd equipped me for walking with him a little bit better. All right? So the first thing is that God's going to meet the needs for salvation. Absolutely. You need to be saved. You can be saved. You come to Jesus. He will save you from the punishment for your sins. That's what you're saved from, right? You're saved from hell. I mean, you know what's going to happen to you if you die in your sin? You've got to pay for it. You know? So he made a way that you don't have to. You save from that payment. Now it brings us to point number two. Another need that he meets. Y'all, this is past, present, future. Okay? He takes care of the sins of our past and he gives us strength for today. That's point number two. Strength for today. Strength for the, the mission at hand. Is there ever come across a day where God didn't give you the strength to make it through. 
You've made it. And there's going to be days that you come upon that you think you can't. But you have. Christian friend, let me tell you something. God loves you and He wants to make a way for you to have the strength that you need today, the power you need today, and, and to have the outlook that you need today. Because there are a lot of people that seem kind of hopeless in our world today. In James chapter 1, verse number 5, the Bible says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to, to all without finding fault. If you ask, it will be given to you. So what God wants to do is if there's anything you need for today, ask Him. The Bible, all throughout the Bible, it says, see and knock, and it will, it, God will open the door and He will answer you. If you look for it, He will help you find it. If you seek Him out, you will find Him. And what does He have? Today, you got up on Sunday morning, and you, you could have done anything in the world today, but you chose to come here, okay? That was a choice that you made. And maybe you were looking for some wisdom. Maybe you are looking for some strength for the week or for the day. Or maybe you just wanted to worship God and just give Him an hour of devoted attention and sing about Him and, and sing to Him. Church shouldn't make you feel worse. It should make you feel better, Right? Worshiping should make you feel better. It shouldn't make you feel worse. If it's making you feel worse, it's conviction, and we need to get some things straightened out, okay? If there's anything that you're struggling with, as a Christian, let me tell you something. God spoke to James and said, write this down. If anybody needs to know something, just tell them to ask me. I know everything. I'm not going to judge. I'm not even going to ask why you're asking. I'm just going to give you an answer. And that's what Jesus does. Every single day. Now do you trust Him? Do you go to Him for answers every single day? When you get saved, there is a change that is wrought in your heart. And it is, you have died to self and human nature, but it does not vanish. It's still in there. And it's going to fight with your new spiritual nature every single day. So it's like training. If you're going to play a, uh, a game or say, say you're going to get into uh, fencing, all right? Fencing is not putting up a fence. It's sword fighting. They don't call it sword fighting. They call it fencing because I don't know why. All right, so they got it. Maybe it's because their face mask looks like a fence. So the point is you've got to jab each other with this stick. Now, if you train you're probably going to get more familiar with the, the stick and the way the stick flops and pokes and all of those things. And plus you're wearing some kind of electric, electric fence mechanism on your body, so if it touches, it's kind of like, you know how they used to would power the uh, bumper cars at Six Flags? It'd be that thing up at the top and it'd be raking across all the metal and sparks and everything. Did that ever freak y'all out when y'all was kids? I'd be driving that thing just staring at the lightning. Y'all? Power in it, I'm telling you. But you got to be connected. And that's, that's kind of how it is. When, when we are connected to the Lord, we have access to the power. But if we're not connected, we're just, we're just sitting there, you know? We're like fencing and, and, and we're doing like this. <clears throat> You're not going to win like that. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. They do a lot of poking, right? Yeah. And you got to do it just right, too, because you can't just stand there and do like that. Right? you got to train. And this was a bad, 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 bad example. You know, let's say anything else. Yeah. Train for that, you become better at it. Okay? Except for fencing. I think I can do pretty good at it. I watch Tom and Jerry. Anyway, <clears throat> y'all know because the little mouse with the hat on guard. Yeah, we've all seen it. That's our history. That's our teaching for fencing, right? That's all of our knowledge about fencing is Tom and Jerry. <laughs> the 
musketeers. All right. <clears throat> so we have what we need from God for our past and our present. But we also have what we need from God for our future. There is absolutely no way that we can make it through today and even think about tomorrow without hope. When we are hopeless, that's when we feel like things are falling apart, that like things are not going to be better, they're never going to get good, and, and there is nothing that's ever going to happen positive in my life. But that is not what the Bible says. All right? The Bible says that we have a hope. Now, in Hebrews 9.27, the Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to die, and then after that to face the judgment. So that is an appointment that we're all going to keep if the Lord tarries. We're all going to die. We're going to stop. Every single one of us, our hearts are going to stop one day. Okay, Our brains are going to not have any more thoughts. Our bodies are going to shut down. But your soul that is inside of your body is going to leave this body, this meat vehicle that it's trapped in, and your soul is, is eternal. It's going to go on somewhere. Now, your soul is either going to go to be in the presence of God, or it's going to go to wait until the final judgment. Okay, It's one or the other, but it's not going to cease to exist. We know that the rich man, when he went down to hell, he was awake, he was alive, he was saying, please tell my brothers not to come down here. It was, it was tragic. And it was suffering. It wasn't the final hell, but that's where it was. Now, we know that anybody who has placed their faith in Jesus Christ, the moment they, their body dies, their soul goes to be with Him in paradise. Now, I got hope in that. I got hope in that. When we sing these songs about, are you washed in the blood? I, I can say, yeah, I am. I know I am. I absolutely am washed in the blood. I know it. All right? I know also that once I die... God has made it to where death does not have the sting that it used to be because He's taken away the fear of death, okay? So now if I die, I mean, it'll be sad for, you know, my wife and kids and stuff, but, you know, I'll make it, you know? I will have made it to the finish line. Do you understand what that means? Every single thing that bothers me every day will be over. You understand what I'm saying? I will never be aggravated again. Never, ever. I will be in the presence of God. Do y'all not start to think about what hope means? I mean, you're going through it today. You're going through a dark time today, but hope is the opposite of that. When you look to God with the forgiveness of sins, the strength for the day, and the hope for the future, how can you not look at your situation, your problems, and just laugh? devil, you think you got it. You think you're winning. The devil has been haunting me for 50 years trying to get me to turn my back on God, trying to get me to believe his lies, trying to get me to, to uh, not help people. You need a good excuse? Ask the devil. He's got a bunch of them, don't he? He wants you to just shut down and be useless. That's what he does. And the more you try to do for the Lord and get closer to God, the more He will attack you. And the harder it will be. I'm going to show you something. It's Peter that stood there and was like, God, where are we supposed to go? We've been shown the truth. There's nowhere else we can go to be in the truth like it is around you. Where can we find holiness? Where can we find somebody that can walk on water? Where do we find somebody that can multiply the fish and the loaves of bread and feed 5,000 people? Where can we find that at? If you hear my voice, there's only one place on this planet you can find it. And that's in Jesus Christ. He has the only blood that can pay for the sins of mankind if you'll accept it. He has the power to get you through today with His presence, with His provision. He'll give you what you need. He'll help you through. God knows He'll help you keep from just losing your mind some days, right? He can do that. And He wants to do that. And He'll also give you hope for tomorrow that, you know, today was just rough. I've had enough of today. I can't take no more today. 
the hope that Jesus has for us is that it's going to be all right. It's going to get better. You're going to be fine. You do know this. You know, in our lives, we... Let me just test it. I, I forget it. I don't know if y'all do, but I do. There are times when, when, when I don't lose my faith, but I, I forget about it because of the circumstances surrounding me sometimes. Y'all, y'all do that too? And, and the world will get... I mean, it's like you see the cloud coming, and it's a big dark cloud, and you know there's a storm in the drop. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. And it's coming. And it's kind of a cliche. Um, when we come to Jesus, He will teach us how to not avoid the storm, but He will teach us how to dance in it. And it, it is absolutely weird. When things are falling apart to exhibit faith, who does that anymore, right? I mean, when the world is falling apart, who's praising God and glorifying God? It's like, ooh, God that gave us the opportunity right here to minister. Ooh, this is tragic, but God, you're doing something mighty. Sounds weird, doesn't it? Do you know that God has selected you for something special? Do you know that? Can't nobody else be you. And can't nobody else check off the boxes that God has planned for you. You're the only one that can do that. Can't nobody else live your life. Can't nobody else be Jim. You know, you're the only one that can be that. You're the only one that could have been married to Margaret. You're the only one. You are him, you know. And the world wants to say, no, you ain't him. Well, you are him. You are him. You're the one that God planned and poured into. That makes you special. The devil don't want you to believe that. The devil wants you to think that you're special. You never will be special. You won't ever be nothing. God says, follow me. I'm going to tell you something. In our hearts, on a weekly basis, we have uh, we have challenges that we go.